so don't judge me i wasn't gonna make a video today but i got on twitter and i saw that it was hashtag national boyfriends day so i just wanted to give a quick shout out to my boo who isn't technically my man but he is so don't mess with him but he's not but he kind of is so leave him alone happy national boyfriends day to you you know who you are Hey, what's up everybody? It's Amy Register from Greater Than Rubies coming to you live from my new job. I'm at the Arroyo Grande SCA Church in California. So I'll be here another year and hopefully I have more time to spend on videos and the blog and keeping up um, the Greater Than Ruby stuff than I did last year. Sorry about that. So it is National Boyfriends Day, which is a really good time to do a video. Uh, I want to do kind of a follow-up to one I did about how to get a guy to notice you. This is a godly man, somebody who's interested, you're interested, but thus far you've gone to church potlucks or other Christ-centered meetings and all you've done is like stare across the room at each other and just wish, you just wish that he would pay attention to you, that he would take it to the next level to ask you on a date. If that's you, then today's video is just for you. Okay, let's get down to the question, shall we? Here it is. As a Christian girl or woman who really wants to get a guy to talk to her on hashtag National Boyfriends Day, is it okay to make the first move? Now, some people might argue with me, but I say Unequivocally, yes, it's absolutely okay. So I think sometimes as Christian women, we have these two conflicting views and one seems to be outside the church and one seems to be inside the church. Let me address those briefly. Viewpoint number one would be the empowered women view, the view that feminism tells us it says, anything you wanna do, you should do. You're a woman, you're as good as a man, you're as strong as a man. So if you wanna ask a guy out, you make the first move. Don't feel bad about it at all. Just be unapologetically out there and get what you want. You do you, boo. The second opinion, which seems to come from inside the church, is this kind of view of a man and a woman's roles, their physiology and how they were made. And it says that, hey, guys were meant to be more aggressive. They are made to pursue. So you actually rob them of the, the natural joy they have of being in the chase. And so you don't want to go and be too aggressive because then he won't know that you're a prize to be won and you'll never feel as if you were pursued or desired. And that's totally true. I felt that in my own life and I've talked to so many women who have started out as aggressive and then realized um, it may not end up being as fulfilling as that second viewpoint. I have kind of a mixed view on this, and by mixed I don't mean I flip-flop from one to the other. I mean both of these theories in my mind come together to form what I think is really appropriate and really beautiful for the girls and young women of our age. I think that there is a solution for the empowered woman of our age who is also of the belief that a man should do most of the pursuing. Let's find a happy medium here, people. The girl. I mean, we've got a group of encouraging friends who if we put ourselves out there for a guy and he doesn't like us, we come back to them and they're like, oh, he doesn't know what he's missing. You're so beautiful. You know, you've got it all together. But a guy, if a guy goes and asks you out, he does. He goes back to his group of friends and, and they're like, well, you really screwed that one up, didn't you? And so he doesn't have the same... Um, same support really that we have when it comes to these situations so my strategy has been and I think it will work for you is kind of a combination of these two things where you make the first move absolutely but you make a move that's more of an, an opening door of giving your time and your attention and then letting him choose whether he will walk through that or not when I was younger I used to read this magazine called Victoria. It's all about this gracious Victorian living and women in hoop skirts and um, having lemonade on the porch and cookies. And there was an article that talked about some of the courting practices in the late 1800s and early 1900s when it was still really taboo for a woman to be aggressive at all or to let her intentions be known at all. 
So the technique she would use if she was interested in a young man is that she would be sashaying down the sidewalk and she would drop some belonging of hers, maybe a handkerchief or um, a glove or something like that. And then of course the chivalrous man would brush over to her aid, notice that she dropped something and pick it up and say, Madame, I believe this is yours. And so that was her making the first move. That was her opening the door to conversation or being maybe a little bit sly, maybe a little bit cunning about it, but um, making it possible for him to, to get into contact with her without really making it look like he was going out of his way for her. I think it would be wise for us to use some of those same things today. And in fact, I do this not just in romantic situations, but in situations where I just wanna make a friend. How can we make it easy and accessible to communicate with us? That's really all we're asking here. I think a modern interpretation of this um, could look like, you know, you going into church and wanting to see if there's a seat up front available, but maybe you have, you know, your book bag or your jacket with you. It would be totally appropriate for you to single out the guy that you're interested in if he's standing there in the back or coming in at the same time and just say, could you hold this for a second? I want to go see if there's space up front. And that would give you an easy way to get in conversation with him and an easy way to come back and thank him and let him be chivalrous, let him um, have done something nice for you. Asking an easy favor of him is kind of a, a door opening approach. Another way to make it easy for this guy to start conversation with you is to ask him to do something for you that he's good at, some, something that he shines at. Maybe you have a school camping event coming up or something where you need a certain kind of gear. Man, a lot of guys I know love to research like tech stuff and gear. So find a guy that you think like, wow, that guy has really nice hiking shoes or that guy has a super sweet backpack, whatever it is. Just be like, you look like you know your stuff. Would you mind helping me research and finding, you know, the right sleeping bag for this weather or whatever it is that could be helpful. And that would give him an opportunity to do a small favor for you. That would also give you an opportunity after you get it and try it out, if you like it, just to go back and thank him for his help in making those kind of decisions. So those are just two easy ways I'm sure you can think of, of a bunch of them. But the key is look for a way to ask for a small favor um, and look for a way to highlight something that he might already be good at. Um, as a way to start the conversation, open the door. And then if he doesn't take you up on the conversation and it ends there, hey, that's that. There are many other interesting young men in the world. So um, happy National Boyfriend Day. I hope it works out for you and whoever that cute godly man is. Go get him, tiger.